Happy 4th of July weekend to everyone watching. Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report. Matthew Peterson here with a mailbag edition of the show. I answer the questions you guys ask in a community post. So if you ever want to be on a future mailbag, really simple stuff. Just subscribe, comment your question, and boom, you're in. Like Derek Poland is. Our first question on today's show. Derek asks a very loaded question. If the Seahawks want Baker so bad, What's stopping them from acquiring him? Could Andrew Barry actually be looking to trade for DK Metcalf? And is it possible the Browns trade for Christian McCaffrey if they cut Kareem Hunt? A lot of questions right there, Derek. But let's start breaking this down bit by bit. Why are the Seahawks not trading for Baker right now, right? I understand it would be a little bit of a confusion of if they love him so much, why not do it? Well, one... Fourth of July weekend. Maybe they're just kind of hanging out a little. But that's not the real reason why they haven't pulled off a Baker Mayfield trade. I think they honestly might be curious of waiting into training camp a little bit to see if Drew Locke or Geno Smith looks the part. But then you also run the risk of bringing Baker in late. And then all of a sudden he's catching up but he won't be ready by week one. Home opener against the Broncos. So I think a Baker Mayfield trade to Seattle or Carolina will happen before training camp starts. But as for why maybe a DK, why I don't think a DK Metcalf or say a Christian McCaffrey trade could happen, and Andrew Barry is not gonna look to trade for DK Metcalf or Christian McCaffrey before he knows the resolution of the Deshaun Watson, you know, saga. Reason being, why get DK Metcalf, and then all of a sudden you find out Watson is suspended for a full season, so Metcalf's rookie final year of his rookie deal. I wouldn't say it's going to waste, but it's definitely not being utilized super well when you don't even have Watson behind the, you know, behind the center, and you've got Jacoby Brissett using up Metcalf's final year of his rookie deal, and then you have to be the one that extends him. Now, I also think it's worth noting, why would Seattle trade for Baker and then give up DK Metcalf, right? That doesn't really seem to make sense to me because if they're going to go out and get Baker Mayfield, they are not punting on this season. They are looking around the NFC thinking, it's not that difficult of a conference. What if we got Baker and just tried to put something together? We already have DK and Tyler Lockett. It doesn't make sense to get Baker and then turn around and give away DK Metcalf. That doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense to me. But if you guys are ready for Cleveland Browns training camp and real Browns football like I am, because don't get me wrong, I love a good trade rumor, love a good rumor, but I love football. So if you are in that camp as well, hit that subscribe button today. That way you get the best Browns news and rumors coverage. Next question comes in from All Hats No Break TV. Have you got an update on the Denzel Ward injury? I'm assuming no news is good news, but it's an assumption. Go Browns. Well, All Hats No Break TV, always appreciate seeing you in the comments section. But you're right. No news is good news on this front right here. We do have an up, well, I don't know if I call it necessarily an update, but go back in time a little bit to the final mini camp practice, and that is when Denzel Ward left the field with an injury at the end of practice, got an MRI on his foot, came back negative. Since then, there have been no news, there have been no updates. I would think if it was really that serious, Andrew Barry would be looking at some corners right now, but I'm guessing Denzel Ward will be ready for training camp, and even if he misses the first week of training camp, I mean, no sweat, doesn't matter, it's Denzel Ward, he will be ready for week one. I mean, he's thinking about the Panthers, he's not thinking about the preseason, trust me. But let's show the guy some love. Let's put his jersey number down in the comment section. This is one of my favorite things, favorite parts about the dog pound. We show up, right? You guys show up every single time. The bat signals up in the air to show one of our guys some love. So put his jersey number 21 down below in the comment section. Question coming in from Jeffrey. I heard if Judge Robinson rules zero games, the NFL can't add games. But if she gives one or more, the NFL can add or subtract however many games they want. I'm on the side. Watson shouldn't be suspended. But how crazy would it be if that actually happens, though? Go Browns. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so much for putting your question. Always see you in the comments section. Good to see you again. But you're right. The way it works um, is for the NFL in this judiciary process, if Denz, excuse me, if Deshaun Watson gets zero game suspension, no disciplinary action comes from Sue Robinson whatsoever, then the NFL can't appeal it and they can't change much about it, right? 
But if the NFL does come in and they do tack on, sorry, if Judge Robinson does tack on a suspension, the NFL can appeal it to Roger Goodell, who could change the way that goes. You see what I'm saying? So the way it works is no, I mean, no, uh, if Judge Robinson finds that there was no violation of the personal conduct policy and there will not be any sort of suspension or punishment imposed. That's the end of the road. The NFL can't appeal it. But if she even puts out a one-quarter suspension, which you can't do, the NFL can then go, that's not enough. We're appealing, Gade- we're appealing to Goodell, and he can put a whole season on. But I don't think that's going to happen. We got kind of a similar-ish question coming in from my friend Bill, who asked, if Deshaun gets suspended for eight games, what do you think our record will be? My rule of thumb is that backups go 500. You see what I'm saying? If eight-game suspension comes down, you hope Jacoby Brissett can go four and four. And there are some very winnable games early on in the schedule. You've got the Panthers, the Jets, the Falcons. A question mark of a Steelers team? I don't really know what Pittsburgh is going to be like this year with Trubisky or Pickett, whoever is really under center for most of the season. But if... Jacoby Brissett's out there for eight games. I know this roster. We all know this roster is super talented. But still, the AFC is pretty low to this year. Four and four. Five and three. Six and two would be amazing. I don't think that's going to happen. But I would say five and three would be pretty good for Brissett if he has to start eight games. And now, Easy Dinger asked another similar question. So we'll kind of just lump these together really quickly. I feel like the NFL is on its heels with Deshaun Watson case right now. Let's say Deshaun gets a four to eight game suspension. I feel like we are winning 10 to 13 games if that's the case. Also, what's your predictions? And you're looking for a downfield threat at wide receiver that's not willful. Well, let's answer the first question, and then we'll look at some free agent wide receivers. Four to eight games, easy dinger. It's a pretty wide margin, okay? I mean, off the top of my head, right, running through the first couple games of the season, like we said, Panthers, Jets, Steelers, you go three and one in that stretch of the first four games. Yeah, I could definitely see the Browns being in excellent shape if Watson returns week five and his team is 3-1. and one. Even if he was the starting quarterback, it's not guaranteed they're going to start off 4-0 and oh anyway. Eight-game suspension, we just doubled it. So I think it could be most likely 4-4, four and 5-3. Four, and 6-2 and two just feels like a stretch. But as for some down the field, wide receivers still on the market, you got Julio Jones, fantasy football legend, of course. Cole Beasley. Good works well in this slot. Kind of tapered off a little bit last year, but he's been sneaky productive uh, post-Dallas. Deshaun Jackson has expressed interest in playing for the Browns. Deshaun Watson posted about that on his Instagram a couple months ago. I don't think Andrew Barry makes decisions based on Instagram posts. And then you have Emmanuel Sanders, who another player that's way up there in the age column that's kind of tapered off a little bit, but veteran presence and can step into a locker room and make good contributions. But let's have you guys be, you know, Andrew Barry for a moment. Who do you want the Browns to sign? Let me know down below in the comments section. If you had to be the GM, who would you like the Browns to sign? Next question comes in from Ethan H. Ethan with a long one, so we're going to kind of just uh, breeze through it a little bit. But yeah, in your last mailbag, you were a little mistaken. That's no problem. That's what I'm here for on, say, some free agents after the season. But basically, Ethan's asking right now, is it Super Bowl or bust, or do you see the us as a Super Bowl window as, right, is it one to two years or is it the entirety of Deshaun Watson's contract? I think it's the entirety of Deshaun Watson's contract, right? I mean, look at just some of the key pieces right now in Cleveland, excluding Deshaun Watson, because we know five-year, $230 million contract, no Browns fans ever going to forget those details. But as for other key pieces right now in Cleveland, you got Miles Garrett through 2026. He's a free agent in 2027. It sounds like college football when they just schedule games 40 decades from now and it never feels like it's ever going to come. Denzel Ward locked up until 2028. That's spring 2028. Wyatt Teller through 2025, free agent 26. Batonio the same. Nick Chubb up until the end of 2024. So a lot of the key cornerstone pieces of this team and more are locked up for years to come. This is not a one or two year window with Deshaun Watson. This is a long window with number four. Question coming in from Jordan James. Always seen in the comments section. Appreciate you, Jordan. Another long question, so we're going to kind of chop it in half and move quickly. Um, with Jedrick Wills, let's just stop right there for a second because there's been a lot of like I, Jedrick Wills conversations on Brown's Twitter, so we'll look at that in just a second. But then Jordan starts asking, 
um, about the defensive line. It just seems that Andrew Barry may have skipped and danced around the issue uh, on the defensive line as a whole. Had to kind of condense that question for you, Jordan. But Andrew Barry doesn't value the defensive line very highly. He looks at all the positions, and like any GM, you want to pay your quarterback the most because you want to have the best quarterback, right? And then he starts going through the pecking order of what positions he wants to invest the most resources into because he believes that will yield the greatest return, okay? Him, defensive line is a position that you can go young at, start a rookie like Perrion Winfrey, a fourth-round draft pick. Or you can go and find Taven Bryant, right, from the Jags in free agency. Give Jordan Elliott, third-round pick from two years ago. Uh, Tommy Togiai, another day-three pick from last year out of Ohio State. And just kind of half ass it a little bit because he doesn't view the defensive line as a position that will make or break games. Teams are throwing the football more than ever. What does that mean on defense then? You need an edge rusher and you need corners. Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward. Tossing some safeties to keep up with guys in the slot. Grant Delpit, John Johnson, you bring back Ronnie Harrison and you're in good shape. Him defensive line run stopping just isn't what it used to be in the NFL. So I think that's where he stands on the defensive line when it comes to that. And then quickly, Jedrick Will, Wills. Um, I don't know. I think people are being way too harsh on the guy, right? Is he Tristan Wirfs? No. But is he a bad left tackle for the Browns? No. Hopefully this ankle injury is just over with and he can move past it. But I'm optimistic about Wills and his future with the Browns. But if you trust Andrew Barry, type me down below in the comment section. Show the best Browns GM in history. Dare I say, some love and some support right now over the 4th of July weekend. And make sure you follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. If your question wasn't on today's show or you didn't want to ask a question but not have it broadcasted to millions of subscribers here at the Browns Report on YouTube, just DM me on Twitter at Matthew Petey. I got that link for everyone in the comments and the description of today's show. That's going to do it for us. Hope you guys all have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. Stay safe, and I'll see you guys later with more Browns news and rumors. Thank you.